Today I want to explain how you can plan and execute an online survey. First we'll talk about the research questions that will guide your survey. Then we'll discuss how to create a good questionnaire. Finally, I'll tell you about different online survey tools you can use. Okay, let's get started. The first task is to define your research problem. A research problem, sometimes called a research question, is what you want to find out using your survey. That sounds simple, right? But the definition of your research is the most important step in the whole process. To define the research problem, I usually write down a couple of clearly stated research questions. Research questions specify what you want to find out. Don't confuse them with the questions that you put on your questionnaire. So let's say you want to do a customer satisfaction survey. Some possible research questions for your survey could be, how satisfied are the customers overall? Which factors contribute most to the satisfaction or dissatisfaction of customers? And what differences are there in the satisfaction level of different groups of customers? Of course, you can have more than three research questions, but it's best to stay focused and not make your survey too long. That will increase the likelihood that the people answering your questions do complete the entire questionnaire and won't stop somewhere in the middle because they are overwhelmed by the length of the survey. Next, you need to translate your research questions into items that will appear on the questionnaire. These items are the questions you want your survey respondents to answer. There are two broad categories of items to use in a survey, open-ended questions and closed-ended questions. An open question is a question a respondent can answer in his or her own words. Here is an example. What suggestions do you have for improving our services? This question makes sense. Nevertheless, in general, in a survey, open-ended questions should be kept to a minimum. Here is why. First, many respondents won't answer open questions in online surveys. They are just not motivated enough to type or write in a long written response. They may even end the survey altogether at that point. Second, open-ended questions are also more difficult for you to analyze. Before you can count different responses to an open question, you will need to group the similar responses. You need to code them. Closed questions are easier to handle, both for the people who are answering your survey and for you to compile and analyze. That's why most of the questions in your survey should be closed. There are three types of closed questions you can use in your survey. Dichotomous questions, multiple choice questions, and scales. Dichotomous questions have only two response options. For example, have you visited our new store on Main Street? Yes or no? Technically speaking, dichotomous questions have only two answer choices, but in many cases it makes good sense to add a don't know category. Often, yes, no, agree, disagree, or no, don't know is not enough. You want to give the respondents more choices. Here is where you use multiple choice questions. They come in two flavors. Have a look at this multiple choice question where only one answer choice is possible. For this type of question, in an online survey, you should use radio buttons. There are also questions where the respondent can choose more than one response option. Here we use checkboxes instead of radio buttons. Also make sure to point out to your respondents that more than one answer is possible. If your online survey software allows you to do so, answers should not appear in the same order for all respondents. That's because respondents tend to choose answer choices that appear at the beginning or at the end of a list more often than other answer alternatives. To prevent this pattern, it makes good sense to vary the order of the answers for each respondent. Look for this option in your survey software. The last type of uh, closed questions are scales. There are many types of scales you can use. Here are two examples that could appear in a customer satisfaction survey. Adapt them to your own surveys. One type of scale you often see in surveys because it's very versatile is the Likert scale. It is a scale with five scale points that range from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Likert scales are used to measure the respondent's attitude towards a company, a brand, or a person. 
Another type of scale that is frequently used is the semantic differential. You will present the respondent with uh, opposing adjectives like friendly, unfriendly, fast, slow, reliable, unreliable, and so on. The respondents then indicate how well these adjectives describe a person, a logo, a slogan, brand, or company. A semantic differential usually has seven scale points, but you can also use a different number. One more thing to remember. The order of the question counts too. One way of ordering questions that's frequently used is the funnel approach. Start with the broadest questions and the questions that are easiest to answer. Then ask the more specific questions. Finally, at the end, ask the questions your respondents might be reluctant to answer. Often these are socio-demographic questions like the person's age, educational level, or income. In many cultures, people hate to reveal their income. So ask that question last and maybe they're more likely to answer it. Also, you should only ask questions that are applicable to your specific respondents. Or again, they may stop answering. For example, look at these two questions. Do you play a musical instrument? And then, which of the following instruments do you play? The first question is a branching question. Only if the respondent answers yes to the first question should the second question even appear. If there are questions in your survey that only apply to some of your respondents, use branching questions and make sure that the online survey tool you use supports skip logic. Not all do. So now you know what to ask, how to ask it, and what order. What's still missing is the software to publish your questionnaire online. Fortunately, there are many options and many are free or at least offer a free version. The free versions, however, can be limited in two ways. First, the number of questions allowed per survey, and second, the number of responses you can collect. Here are three tools that can help you. The first two survey tools are my personal favorites because they have very few restrictions. Google Forms is pretty awesome. It's completely free for both commercial and non-commercial surveys. You can create questionnaires that are pretty much any length and the number of people who can answer your questions is virtually unlimited. The cons are, there are relatively few answer types and the built-in data analysis tools are quite limited. If you want to use Google Forms, you need to sign up for a Google account. Google Forms is part of the Google Docs collection of online apps. Soci Survey is an excellent online research tool for online surveys and experiments. It offers many different options and capabilities. Soci Survey helps you collect your survey data, but to analyze it, you'll need to download it and use data analysis software like SPSS. Check out my video, uh, Data Analysis in SPSS Made Easy, to learn how to analyze survey data. Soci Survey is free if you use it for a non commercial academic research project, like a class project, a thesis, or a dissertation. You can also use it for commercial marketing research, but you'll have to pay for that use. Check out their terms and conditions for more details. SurveyMonkey is the most well-known online survey tool. There is a free version, but it's very limited. If you want to do your own survey for free, you're probably better off using the other two survey tools I describe here. If you're willing to pay, however, SurveyMonkey has lots of bells and whistles. So check it out for yourself and see if it fits your survey needs. Okay, there you have it. Conducting an online survey really isn't that difficult. It can even be fun. Good luck with your next survey. I'm sure it will be a success.